Dude, what's up? This video, we're going to be talking about packages because I was like sitting here and I was like, man, this project's got a package. I mean, shouldn't we be like talking about it? By the way, I just woke up. It's like four in the morning. And I'm just going to make videos all stinking day. So it's going to be legit. So apologies ahead of time if I'm a little slap happy, but have to get motivated somehow. So let's just get into this. We're going to dissect packages when to use them. So first we're going to look at when to use them with the stuff that already exists in Java and then we're going to talk about packages for our own classes. So yeah, let's get started. So the primary purpose of a package is to group related classes. So we might have numerous classes for a particular project or for an organization and we might want to put those all in one package. We see this inside of Java already with certain things. So for example, the one that always comes to my mind is ArrayList. So when you're working with an ArrayList, let me just type it out here real quick. You always have to hover over this and select Import ArrayList. And then we get this import statement right here. So having this package thing at the top and this import here, those are two separate things. Import allows us to use other packages. This line here, which we haven't actually done in this the series yet this allows us to define a new package so let's first look at the imports so that will be bringing other packages into our project so the package we're working with is java.util so what that means is we can go to the declaration of an array list and we can go in here and scroll to the very top and you can see this is the package it's defined within so inside of this java.util, there's probably a bunch of other classes that we can use that are all considered utility classes. So that is how they decided to organize it. So that's the first benefit, it's to group similar classes. The other thing is that it allows us to deal with more than one class with the same name. If we did something like pair, and said new pair, well at one point, we probably created this class and that's right over here but we're actually in a different project right now and you can just create a new project or whatever it doesn't really matter the point is that this pair is very mm, general and there's actually a lot of different pairs um, and yeah I don't know why we keep talking about fruit in this series but we got java.util we got some other junk and what we can do is we can click any of these and when we do that it imports that statement right there now it doesn't appear to actually be working, but that's not the point. The point is that there's numerous pairs and they're all in different packages. If we didn't have packages, well then we could easily get name conflicts because if we said pair, how would it know if we wanted to get pair from java.util or from some other package out there? Especially when you start pulling in software from other people, you know if there's libraries you want to use, what if their classes have the same name as the classes you're using inside of your project and Java was just like yo bro you can't use this library because there's name conflicts well fortunately Java gives us the ability to be a little bit more specific on what class we want to import using the import statement now another thing to know with the import statement is that we're not taking some library and importing the code into our project. The import is actually just a thing for simplicity when it comes to typing things out. Because we type out pair, it wants to know where pair is coming from. Or we type out ArrayList, it wants to know where ArrayList is coming from. So if we didn't use the imports, we can actually still use these things, these classes, but we just got to specify where it's coming from. So anytime someone says qualifying, in programming it's usually not talking about being adequate or qualified for something rather it's referring to saying where something is coming from so you prefix something with a dot so for example when you say a method like add you don't just say add by itself usually it's attached to some object so we would say stuff dot add so we qualify this add method with this stuff array list same exact concept inside of packages. So for example, we can let me get rid of this pair here. Let's say we wanted to use array list, but we did not import this package. What we would just have to do is say java.util dot. And I think it's lowercase 
Yep, there we go. And same thing here, java.util.raylist. So you can see it seems to be working, there's no errors. We can get rid of this other import statement and we could compile our code and run it. So you can actually import packages or just one specific class from a package. So for example, this array list, this is just a class. So when we say something like import java.util.arraylist, we're actually just importing that one specific class. So then we can get rid of this and get rid of this here. And it's happy with that. However, we cannot go then and say list of type something. So typing this out all the way, you can hover over this and you can see we would have to do another import statement. So I'll hit that and now we have two imports. An alternative, rather than just doing class by class, you can actually use an asterisk to refer to every single class inside of that package. So then we can just end the semicolon there and now array list is good and list is good. Now, how does this affect our code? Is this gonna make our code a lot bigger in size because it just imports everything? No, because again, as I mentioned, the import doesn't actually affect what is available to us. It just affects what we have to type to be clear about what we're referring to. So if you like to keep your code simple, just one line, you can just import it like so, and then you can use any class inside of java.util. However, if you want to be very clear to other developers or to yourself, and be specific about which imports, then you can do it and expand it out to array list and list. So let's say you get a project and you add this import and it just imports everything and you're just not a huge fan of, of that. You can go up here and go to, sorry, I always forget, <laughs> source, organize imports and boom, it expands it out just to use the imports that you're using and it doesn't just have the import everything. So that's pretty awesome. So oftentimes you'll see like a class and then right to the left of it, you'll see a package and then you'll see another thing or like numerous things even farther, which are basically package prefixes. So you can actually sequence things together using dots when you're creating packages. And what this does is basically gives you a way to organize the structure. So often this will be based off of some company name. If you're working at a company and they're working with packages, so you might see like com.calebcurry.sweetprojectname. <laughs> so let's go through an example of creating a project and using prefixes inside of our package name. We'll also show how to create packages because I never actually showed you guys how to do that. So let's do that now. So we'll just say file new Java project. We'll just call this packages and hit finish. For the module info, just don't create. And then expand the project over here on the left. And you see the source, right click that and say new class. We'll call this packages as well. And it gives us an option to type in a package here. So this is probably where I would suggest doing it. So we would do something like com.calebcurry.packages, which is just the project right now. The equivalent would be java.util. You don't put the class name. It just happens to be that the packages is the same as the class we're putting in it, but that's okay. So basically what I'm saying is you could go in here and do something like YouTube. And in this situation, I'd basically be putting all of my classes inside of a package called YouTube. I think that that's what we'll go for just to keep things a little bit different in the naming, so he'll hit finish. And it automatically has package com.calebcurry.youtube. So you can see it's really easy to generate a project with a package. The really only thing you have to do special is just worry about the folder structure. So over here on the left, which wasn't so tiny. So in the file structure, it's com.calebcurry.youtube. And if you wanna explore this in the file system, you can actually right click. There should be one here like show in System Explorer, but no, you actually have to go to Properties and then hit this little button. That's gonna open up the folder here. Go into YouTube and we got packages.java. So what does the actual file structure look like? We're in my packages project. 
we got the source and then a folder com and then Caleb Curry and then YouTube. So although in Eclipse, it just shows up as this sequence com.calebcurry.youtube, the actual file structure is a little bit more complicated where each folder is nested within each one. So if you're working with a project without packages and you want to add packages, you need to make sure everything is set up correctly in the folders. So let's go through a simple example like that. So we'll say file. Actually, let's just redo this packages one. So we'll just delete this. Delete. Delete project contents on disk. Yes. Okay. Then we'll say new Java project packages finish. Don't create the module. And then right click new Java class packages and leave this blank here. Finish. So if I did package com dot Caleb Curry dot YouTube, here's how we would make this actually work. Oh, there's actually a quick fix. Move packages.java to package right here. So that'll probably set everything up for us. Hit that and you can see it put it in the correct position. And over here in our files, it looks like everything is set up correctly. So awesome, that is how you create your own package. Also on packages, if you have two classes of the same name, they need to be in separate packages. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna right click the source and say new class and we're going to call this packages. But this could be, instead of in YouTube, it could be in utils, finish. And this works fine, it compiles, and we can actually use both inside of our code. So right now we have two of these packages class and we could pull this into some other code very easily. For example, in source, I'm gonna say new class, and we'll just say example, <laughs> so many new classes here. So hit finish, and what we can do is we could say com.calebcurry, and you can see the options here. We got .utils and .youtube. So we can say .utils .packages. That is how you would refer to that one class and then to refer to the other one, you would just switch this to YouTube. So you can use both in your code. It's a little obnoxious, but it works. Now, if you are only gonna be using one, but you want access to both, that's fine. Then you could import one, and you wouldn't have to, to be so obnoxious about it. You could say import com Caleb Curry dot YouTube and then you could do an asterisk to import all of the classes or you could say dot packages and then get rid of all this here. There you go. So that is how you use your package in your code. Nice and simple, folks. Now, if you don't put a package as we've been doing all of this time, it just goes in a default package. So up until now, all the classes we've created have not been inside of a package and that default package it goes to is actually called the unnamed package, which there's really high risk for naming conflicts when you start building large projects. So anything really serious, you probably wanna organize things into packages. All right, that's enough about packages. Let's move on to the next video. I think we're gonna be talking about access modifiers in the context of classes and probably packages. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.